Hi, my name is Dr. Avery Alatus, and in this video, we'll go over how to perform a therapeutic paracentesis. Start by gathering your equipment. You'll need an ultrasound to identify an appropriate fluid pocket, a paracentesis catheter kit, supplies to send fluid to the lab, and lidocaine if it isn't included in your kit. We will use a series of ordinary suction canisters to collect a large volume of fluid. To do this, you'll need the following. A small piece of IV extension tubing, a three-way stopcock, a 5 ml syringe, several suction canisters with lids, and several sets of suction tubing. You'll need one more piece of tubing than the number of canisters you're using. Open the kit and drop the IV extension tubing, the 5 ml syringe, and the three-way stopcock onto your sterile field. To connect the suction canisters, place the lids on the canisters and close off the large middle port and the smaller middle port, labeled vacuum, here. Using the tubing, connect the canisters in series, connecting the final one to the suction regulator on the head wall. Connect one end of the final piece of tubing to the first canister. This will be connected to the catheter in the patient's abdomen later. Make sure to use the ports that do not have filters on them, usually labeled ortho and patient, as shown here. Now you're ready to perform the paracentesis. Using the ultrasound, identify a fluid pocket in the lower quadrants of the abdomen about 3 cm superior and 3 cm medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. You're looking for an area with several centimeters of fluid and no loops of bowel close to the abdominal wall. Also avoid any visible superficial veins or surgical scars. Mark your site. I like to use the cap of a needle to make an indentation in the skin. If your paracentesis kit does not contain lidocaine, prep and anesthetize the skin prior to donning sterile gloves. Otherwise, we will anesthetize the skin later. Don your sterile gloves. Connect the stopcock to one end of the IV extension tubing and the 5 ml syringe to the other end. Remove the plunger from the syringe. The syringe will connect to the suction tubing later. Drape the patient. Clean the skin again and anesthetize it now if you're using sterile lidocaine. Use the included scalpel to make a small skin nick. Slide the skin over a centimeter or so, then advance the paracentesis catheter and needle through the skin nick and into the peritoneum until you get a flash of peritoneal fluid. Then continue to advance the catheter over the needle while holding the needle still. Once the catheter is all the way in, withdraw the needle. Connect one port of the three-way stopcock to the catheter. If you wish to send fluid to the lab for analysis, you can draw it into a separate syringe using the third port of the stopcock now. Make sure the stopcock is closed to the patient and the IV extension tubing. Place the free end of the suction tubing into the back of the 5 ml syringe. Note that your hands are no longer sterile. Open the stopcock, then turn the suction regulator on the wall on slowly. As fluid starts to flow, you can gradually increase the suction. As each suction canister fills up, the fluid will flow through the tubing into the next canister, as shown here. If at any time you need to pause suction, for example, to add an additional canister or to remove a full one, use the three-way stopcock to turn off to the patient or tubing, then turn off the suction at the head wall. When you're ready to resume drainage, open the stopcock again and slowly turn the suction back on. Once you have removed a satisfactory amount of fluid, close the stopcock and turn off the suction at the wall. Withdraw the paracentesis catheter from the abdomen. Place a sterile bandage, such as a square of sterile gauze and tape, over the site. Last point, when should we give albumin? Albumin is indicated when more than 4 liters of fluid are removed. In this case, the dose is 6 to 8 grams of 25% albumin per liter of fluid removed. Remember, the goal of doing this procedure in the emergency department is not necessarily to drain these patients completely dry, but rather to remove enough fluid to relieve discomfort and bridge the patient until outpatient follow-up. If relieving discomfort requires removal of more than 4 liters of fluid, don't let this deter you. Just remember to give albumin.